Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to talk about something that we've been very unsuccessful with here on our property. And I want to bring to you on this channel the highs and the lows. And this is certainly one of the lows. Okay, friends, so we've had good success with grapes, with solar, with a whole bunch of other things. We've had our challenges too, but this one thing just keeps eluding me. I cannot get it right and it is bugging me to no end. Now this thing is expensive too, and I don't know if I'm going to continue with it or not, because the expense of it for the amount that we've got out of it is just not even there, it's not close. So the investment has been a poor one. All right, we're over here on the north side of our property. You can see our new grape trellises here. Actually, this one isn't complete, but we've had a lot of other things going on. We've got some new, a new blueberry patch here in the middle. Now, over here on my trailer, you can see something that's deconstructed, and you know what that is. So, we had two beehives set up this year with two separate colonies that we had purchased, and one is already gone. So today I'm gonna to talk about our bee experience over the last two years and how terrible it's been. You can see that there's bees at this hive, but most of these bees are not ours. They are robber bees. On the front of it, I do have a robber screen, but I may have put that on too late. So I'm gonna talk about every step that we've taken with our bees. I'm gonna talk about the people that I look up to and have consulted with and watched and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna talk about what the problems are with these and if we are moving forward with them. Okay, first things first. Last year we started off with three colonies and within one month, all of them were gone. That's right, you heard that correctly. Within one month, maybe a month and a half because it took time for them to actually leave, they, uh, they took off. They were infested with hive beetles, with uh, wax moth, which move in when the bees are weak, of course. Last year we did treat mites with oxalic acid, but after 30 days of receiving the bees. And from what I understand, all of the bees had mites so bad that they just, they fled and the queens died and all of that. So the colonies crashed really, really fast. Last year I ran a one deep and one super system and they didn't even move up into the supers last year. I thought I would give it a shot again this year. I purchased two colonies and I had leftover frames from last year, which already had drawn comb on them. Some of them had honey in them still because the robbers didn't get to the ones last year and I froze them so that it would kill all the mites. I froze them for six months and then when I purchased these new colonies, I put a second deep up top and added those frozen frames onto there. Of course, I let them thaw first, so don't worry about that. And if anybody's asking, yes, six months is plenty of time to kill any mites that may have been on those frames. In fact, I think the cold will kill them off in about three days. I also took some very bad advice from a YouTube channel that said, for the first 30 days after you get your colony, let them be and don't disturb them. This was bad because they needed food and they had feeders in there, but they were dry and we were in the dearth. Turn the clock forward to this year, totally different situation. I was doing my mite washes all the time. We have screen bottoms with mite counting boards on the bottoms. We were out here all the time checking, doing our mite counts. We never got over a two or a three, I think it was, per about 300 bees. Now from what I read and what I pay attention to, I'm told that's on the low side. But we still decided to treat our bees for mites. We used Apivar and we did the proper dosage. We did two strips per deep. We also got them on a regular feeding schedule. So we were out here all the time, especially in the dead, hot, nasty summer of Texas, and we were giving them one-to-one -one syrup and keeping that up, and it looked like all of them were growing really well. They were drawing comb out to the edges of the top deep and starting to fill that in with pollen and honey, and that's why I put the supers on. I made sure I did regular checks and was out here once to twice per week. I had never seen robbers before, and it's kind of hard to tell at the beginning when your activity is high. It was about a month and a half ago, I walked out here to our now missing uh, hive and colony, and I saw a flurry of activity 
at the entrance. And it looked odd to me, but I didn't have any robber screens. It was only about four days later I was out here cutting the grass and there was zero activity in that second hive. I took that hive down, set it aside so it didn't get overwhelmed with uh, wax moss and hive beetles and those would migrate over to the other one. This one here I thought was fine. I was never able to see the queen and I did regular inspections, but I could not find her. Although there was still brood in there and it looked like a low amount of brood. It looked like she certainly could be laying more eggs, but there was a solid amount of pollen. I saw bees coming in with pollen on their legs and I saw a, just a ton of honey. Even right now, those deeps are really heavy with honey. I also looked at the color of the cap on top of the brood and I really couldn't see that it was an off or terrible color. So I kept moving forward. I did an oxalic acid treatment. I kept up with my Apivar strips and I kept feeding them. What else can I do? Honestly, I come out here last week and I see robbers. And now I'm really in tune with those robbers. I got a robber screen, I put it on there, but the activity inside the hive is terrible. I see more hive beetles. I've got my beetle blaster traps in there. I've got Swiffer sheets, which catch, catch a lot of them. I don't see any wax moss currently, but the ants have really moved in also. There is a ton of robbers outside of that robber screen. They're trying to get in everywhere. I've got a few um, regular bees, my bees going in the uh, robber screen. They know where to get in, but I'm gonna say that this hive is done too. So I doubled down on the study this year also, okay? This is point number two. I found two amazing uh, YouTube channels Cayman Reynolds and David Burns. David Burns is like the um, Ohio Beekeepers Association president maybe, or he does something with the, something up in Ohio. He, he knows what he's doing. Cayman Reynolds, I believe is in Tennessee, and you can go look at their stuff. They are always doing experiments with their bees and they're successful. And then of course I keep up with my reading and I keep in contact with the bee farm here in East Texas where I got the bees. So I did all that. I've got advice, emailing with the bee farm, watching everything, studying, and still no success. And every time I buy a new colony, it is 250 bucks. And that doesn't include all the equipment, all the Apivar medicine, all the sugar, all the everything that I have to have to keep these things alive. And they are extremely difficult to keep alive here in Texas. Now I've got two friends, they might be watching right now. One is in uh, Nebraska and one is in Missouri. And both of them have had pretty decent success with bees. But here's the thing, I was talking to the bee farm and what the owner said to me was that mites in Texas are devastating. They are so bad. And every single solitary bee farmer has, obviously, mites. But here in Texas, it's a lot of mites. She has a lot of mites. She loses colonies all the time. But when you have 150, 200 colonies, it's not that big of a deal. When you buy two of them for about 500 plus dollars, and you lose one or lose two of them within just a few months, it's not worth it, friends. And that's it. I don't like to give up on anything, but you gotta look at it and say, well, is this something I'm being successful at while spending money? Yes, I'm learning some things, but it's still not panning out. Is the additional investment in them worth it? And at this point for me, I'm gonna say no. This is a very expensive thing to try to do with limited success, especially if you are a small time beekeeper and you're just trying to get one or two colonies established. I would say unless you are going to go big and go like 20 colonies to start with and really focus on it and really be out there all the time with these bees, then I wouldn't do it. You have to weigh pros and cons. You have to see where you're having success and put your money and time there. And where you're not having success, move on. I don't know, I'll probably get a few people saying, you're such a quitter. But you know what, that's fine. Doesn't bother me, they just don't understand. The next part of this video is me soliciting advice from you. If you are a successful small beekeeper, 
that means less than five colonies, less than five hives. And you are in Texas because that seems to be the real challenge. A small amount of hives in an area with just a massive amount of mite problems. If you've done this and if you've heard in my testimony about my bees, uh, anything that I screwed up, which I just cannot see right now, let me know about it. And friends, I don't ever want you to give up on anything but I want you to focus your attention on the things that are being successful and that really greatly benefit and are really important for your homestead. For right now, bees are not that for me. We will have some natural pollinators in the area for pollination, honey stores in almost indefinitely, so we can buy a decent amount of honey and have it stored. I would have loved to bottled, have bottled and sold my own honey that just is not in the cards right now. Thank you so much for being here with us. Now go click on these videos right here, which is one of our successful endeavors, which is building our solar systems here on our property. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.